were just listening to that TED radio podcast on the way over here. There was a whole thing about privacy. And the guy said, your search engine knows more about you than anybody you know, including your loved ones and your And that's interesting. So what I loved about this book was it portrayed people in their most private moments. And it's a tricky thing to make a movie about people in their private moments because it's just people staring at cell phones and at computers. Our lives are strangely quiet. We just tap away. Um, and it was an exciting structural challenge of how to make a movie in which people are always interacting with their devices. And there was an interesting human challenge as far as how do we talk about people in their most intimate, revealing moments uh, and not feel as though the storytellers are judging the people in the last And my gut is if I looked at your search history, I would learn a lot more personally about you than I would by talking to your parents. Sure. And it is this desperate attempt to connect with something we don't even know exists. We have this human instinct to connect. There's a reason why we like the internet uh, so much. Uh, but what's unusual is, like, is that instead of connecting with the people that are around us, instead of being more revealing with the people in our lives, uh, we search for communities of strangers and reveal ourselves. And that's it. Uh, you know, I co-wrote this movie with Aaron Cresta Wilson. Uh, and so we talked a lot about who these actors, uh, many of them. I mean, a lot of the young actors were people I didn't know before we started auditioning. Uh, actors like Ansel Elgort and Caitlin Beaver. Uh, but the adults, I certainly knew who they were. Uh, yeah, it was fun. In fact, Jen Garner and I were flying on a plane to Cleveland because my father was making a movie there called Draft Day that Jennifer was in. She was sitting in the seat in front of me. Pure coincidence. And I just handed her my iPad and I said, here, give this script a read. And that's how she read the movie. She read it during the flight. And she came back to me and she said, whoa, this is dark. I said, I know. Do you want to play that character? <laughs> She's like, all right, I'm in. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. To Twitter. You're on Twitter quite a bit. Quite a bit is an overstatement. Uh, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on Instagram, and I use Twitter professionally. I tweet about once a month or so. I, uh, Sorry? Instagram? No, I, uh, and, and everyone I know is pushing me to do Instagram. I would have done No, I've never been big into social media, and the movie actually doesn't deal a lot with social media. Um, it deals more with uh, the way we text and the way we search the web more than it does. Like, there's, a, there's plot lines devoted to Ashley Madison. There are not plot lines devoted to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So I, I, what interests me more is the communities that we find online to warrant our behavior. And when I read the book, it was the first time I had ever heard the term thin inspiration. I'd never heard that before. I didn't know what pro anna communities were, that I had this sick idea that a young woman could go online and find a community that would help her become a more proficient anorexic it is horrifying, particularly as a father of a seven-year-old girl. Um, but this is part of our complex relationship with the internet, um, is that we search for self-confidence in the wrong places. And for whatever community you're looking for, it exists out there. So, uh, while social media brings about a whole other set of questions, the amount we share, that really is not the question of the movie. The question of the movie is, how do we connect? And that is what I find is similar about this movie and Up in the Air, and all of my work, is I'm interested in, in intimacy and what brings us together, what pulls us apart, and why we are so often so scared to say the things that are on our mind and in our heart. I'm, I love direct, frightening honesty from people and from my characters. I think that's why my first hero was Nick Naylor and Thank You for Smoking, who said, yeah, we all know cigarettes are dangerous. What's the problem? Or a pregnant teenage girl who talked the way that Juno did. Or even Mavis in Young Adult, who I have a crazy amount of affection for, no matter how ugly she is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the film. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Thanks,